Sound check is done down to the uh, airspeed box. We can witness the fatal combination of the macho type and the non-assertive type in this training film. It's a reconstruction in a simulator using voice transcripts from a serious accident that actually happened to a major airline. Here comes flight slope. Watch out for the way the flight engineer in the seat nearest us and the captain, John, on the left, gang up on the young co-pilot in the front right. They're just about to begin their final okay, descent. Gate 17. Heavy gate 17, John. Oh, good. That's right by that little snack bar. Yeah, yeah. good gate. Yeah, well, we've got about a half hour on the ground. We can uh, run in there, get something to eat, get the weather, and be on our way to Seattle. Good. Blow the glide slope there, John. Yeah, well, we know where we are out here. We're all right. How you waited? The Fox is going to have it wired. I hope so. Right in. Oh, yeah. No problem. Is this a little faster than you normally fly this, John? Oh, yeah, but it's nice and smooth. We're going to get in right on time, maybe a little bit ahead of time. We got it made. Sure hope so. You know, John, you know the difference between a, a duck and a co-pilot? What is the difference? Well, a duck can fly. Well said. Seems like there's a little bit of a tailwind up here, John. Yeah, we're saving gas. Help us get in a couple minutes early, too. In fact, they're less than eight miles out, going 40 knots too fast and 200 feet too low. John, you're just a little bit below the MDA here. Yeah, well, we'll take care of it here. The captain's answer to being too low is to casually leapfrog the aircraft up over the glide slope in a last minute attempt to correct. It's a fatal maneuver. Going just a little bit high. Well, gear down. Final check. No smoking signs. That's all right. Flight and nav instruments. They're cross-checked. Two degrees. Uh, landing gear. It's down three green. Speed brakes. Really look awful high, John. Uh, Speed five brakes. degrees. Five degrees. Fifteen degrees. 15. Twenty-five on the flaps. Like John, you're really high. You're going to need flat. 40 is what you need here. Get the speed brakes in. Get this in. thing down. They're, uh, they're armed. You want the speed brakes on? I don't think you're going to make it, John, if you don't get this sucker on the ground. Get it on, John. You're not going to make there we it. Go. You're not going to make it. Oh, we're going around. Oh, it's 140, 130 knots. Look, I stopped, John. Not gonna make it, John. Great, John. I told you. Jeez. The right stuff, as as we see it in test pilots and in uh, in in the early, but not the present astronauts, is really this combination of high technical competence, a very rugged individualism, and a very high level of competitiveness. The latter two are very destructive when you're trying to function as an effective team. The trouble is, whole generations of military flyers who venerated those test pilots and tried to emulate them went on to fly for commercial airlines, taking the right stuff with them. In many accidents, the result is not that the crew makes a major mistake, but that the captain decides in an emergency situation that he must fly the aircraft and he must physically take control of the airplane because he has the right stuff. What he fails to do then is to manage the situation and to use the resources that are available from the other crew members. So he has turned it into a single-seat fighter when in fact he needs all of the assistance he can get. He refuses to, uh, to see it as a group problem, but as an individual problem. <laughs>